Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today what we're going to cover is break falls, how to fall from both a jiu-jitsu style and an Aikido style. What stimulated this video of doing break falls is I actually got thrown by Briston Lowry and he is uh, he doesn't like to brag about all this because he, he's a super humble guy but he's actually a world champion jiu-jitsu expert and what did you uh, get your champion in? I, in 2012, I won the IBJJF Nogi Worlds at Brown Belt Masters, and then in 2013, I won the SJJIF Worlds at Black Belt Masters. Well, thank you. And so we're going to tap into his expertise in this video of breakfalls. A lot of us learn this uh, breakfall as trial and error method, and, and how I kind of learned this is uh, doing a thousand of these in one day, and then you you quickly learn what works and what doesn't work. But what I want to do is take you through the basic step by step by step so that you don't have to go through the trial and error. The reason I've asked Briston to help me do this video is the other day he actually threw me and it, I landed real softly. And then I realized that there's a big difference between somebody that's highly skilled throwing you into these break balls and just somebody you know that doesn't know how to throw, uh, throwing you into a break ball. So we're gonna cover both uh, for advanced and beginners, how to actually do the break fall, but actually the skill of the person throwing you as well as the skill of the person falling. Now what I want to first do is show why would you do a break fall or why would you flip over and land on the ground? Well, there's three reasons why you would take a break fall. The first is more of a jiu-jitsu related uh, reason, and that is if he gets my arm into a position to where he is going to break my elbow, so he's, he's trying to break my elbow. So my instinct to save my elbow, I've got to go over the top so that I don't get my elbow broken. So the second way in which I can get thrown into a break fall is he is just going to take me for a ride. So I'm going to come in there, he's going to throw me, and I'm just going to go for a ride. So for the third way to fall, this is more indicative of Aikido, is he's got my wrist in a joint lock, and for me to get out of that, I am going to go straight over the top, just like I did when he was throwing me uh, the other two uh, directions. So now I'm going to go straight over the top, and then I'm going to fall into a break fall. Most people learn break falls in what I call the flop method, meaning you flip over and you land on the ground until you start to get it, uh, and then you work on the skill and, until you get the skill, or you quit, or you just avoid doing the break fall. So what we're gonna do is a step-by-step -step process of what you need to know, both the thrower and the throwee, and how to best develop those skills. So the first thing that we're gonna do is cover break falls from a jiu-jitsu perspective. And the best way to develop that is three stages, you know, as close to the ground as possible, and then partner drills where you're a little bit elevated off the ground, and then eventually where you are falling from a standing position or being thrown. So this first exercise is done from the ground, and this is to help develop your break falls in the safest way possible. So when I break fall on my right side, I'm gonna extend my right arm and my right leg, and I'm gonna to rock to my side and strike the mat, okay? This disperses the energy of the, of the impact, and I wanna act as if I'm squashing a bug. So some things to avoid is striking the mat with the back of your hand, letting your knees flop together. If you're male, you'll understand why that hurts, okay? And then I'm going to rock to the other side. So I'm gonna extend my left arm and left leg, Squash the bug. Right arm, right leg, squash the bug. So this next exercise is to help you develop your back falls. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rock back to my shoulders and strike the mat with both hands, my arms down at a 45 on each side. A couple of key points here. I want to observe the wall in front of me, find a point, and keep my eyes fixed on it, and that will help train me keep, to keep my head from hitting the mat. So 
So stage two of learning how to break fall requires a partner that's gonna keep you a little bit more elevated off the mat. All right, so you'll notice I'm gonna practice my break falls with this method. I'm gonna make sure that I'm slightly higher than my partner here, and I get my, my shoulder and my hip on top of his back. I'm gonna roll over and do a side break fall. And I'm gonna come up, I get my shoulder and hip on top of him, and do a side break fall. So the next part of uh, phase two on our break falls is this exercise where I conduct back falls with a training partner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit on my training partner and I'm gonna slowly slide off his back with my legs and execute a rear break fall. So the third phase of the break fall training is done from the standing position. For the purpose of this video, I'm only going to demonstrate the right side, but from two different angles. So initially I'm going to lower myself. I'm going to extend my right arm and my right leg, conduct my break fall. I rock up to my foot and my hand. From here, I'm going to elevate my hips off the ground and swing my right leg underneath myself and then get up safely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover break balls from an Aikido perspective instead of from a Jiu Jitsu perspective. If you haven't seen it yet, I put together a uh, how to roll video and you can click on the link above to watch that video before you watch this because you have to get the key concepts from rolling before you can do this. So to do the Aikido break fall is uh, a little bit different but mostly the same as the Jiu Jitsu. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, the same position, I'm gonna land on this side of my body. I'm gonna slap just the same. I'm gonna slap my foot. Uh, one thing with the foot, make sure that you don't have the toes in this position because they'll slam together. So you wanna make sure you put your foot off to the side a little bit. And then you're going to have same knee in the same position because you don't wanna flip over and either hurt your knee. So you want to uh, come straight down and then you're gonna, and then the other side. You can roll back and forth to practice this just like jujitsu. Okay, as in the other video, and how to roll, you extend your scapula, extend your arm into this position. I'll show you why that's very important. So that's my rolling arm. Now this backhand is, think of this as like your break. It's gonna stop you. So I'm gonna roll and use this slapping to stop my body. So I'm gonna roll. And this extension of the arm is very important and I'll show you why here in a minute. Okay, once you are able to do a roll into a break fall, now the next step is to use a partner uh, because the idea of doing a good break fall is getting my hips as close to the ground before I do the fall. And to learn that, you really need a partner. So first, I'm going to put my hip on his hip and my, uh, on his back hip. I'm gonna put my leg on his back hip and I'm gonna put my left hand across his, to the shoulder blade so that he can support me with his arm. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, here's my rolling hand. I'm gonna extend my scapula, extend my arm out, and I'm going to touch the mat, just like I'm gonna do a roll, and I'm gonna pivot around his center, and then I'm gonna keep pivoting until I roll into the break fall. So then on the other side, I'm gonna grab the other shoulder, put my weight there, then I'm gonna put my hip on his hip, extend my arm, and then touch, and then roll into a break fall. So then, Leveling up from that, the next skill set, is you're gonna put your hand down just like you did everything before, but instead of putting my hand out like I'm gonna do a roll, I'm gonna reach around and grab his gi underneath here, 
so that I have something to kind of hold on to as I do the fall. So I'm here, I'm gonna reach around, grab the gi, and then pull as I'm falling. Now one of the biggest mistakes I can make when I'm doing a break fall is when I'm going over, if I'm not extending this hand as hard as I can extend it, if I just kind of go over like I pull everything back and then I flop over, that's a really a bad mistake and I'll show you why. So part of his skill of throwing me is as he throws me, he did, uh, there, there's two ways to throw. If he really wants to hurt me, he's gonna just throw me and drive me into the ground and there's no pulling up to save my body. But if you want to uh, save your partner or make the break fall as easy as possible, this is a skill you have to master. My instructor, Sensei Ron Thomas of Don's on Re Jiu Jitsu, used to always say, don't break your toys. And that was his comedic way of saying, respect your training partner. So how I would do that is when I conduct my throw, right, I'm getting Sayonage set up, I do the throw, I pull up at the last minute, and that way that lessens his impact on the mat. So from my perspective, if he just throws me and I'm just a limp rag, so he goes to throw me and I'm just completely limp, I have nothing in my body to give, give him to pull up from. Okay, let's go through the tips of how to do a very good break fall. The first tip is I have to have my arm extended. I, from my center, it's gotta stay extended. I can't tense up and pull back or I'm gonna get hurt. So I've got to extend from my center to my hand and make that like a circle. Because if he's gonna throw me, so he's gonna come in, he's gonna throw me, I'm actually extending into the throw. I don't wanna pull back because it's gonna really hurt when I land. And I wanna stay relaxed, I'm just relaxed here. And as I go over, I'm only gonna tense up at one point, and that's right when I hit, I tense up, tense up and relax. So I'm pretty much 99% of the time, I'm totally relaxed, but extended through the fall. So here's an exercise you can do, is if you can talk through the whole fall, you know you're relaxed. Because if you're like, <laughs> you're just relaxed and talk. So as he's throwing me, I'm just gonna talk through the whole fall, I'm gonna relax, we're just gonna have a nice, little, so you're just relaxed the whole fall. Okay, now what I want to do is show a lot of the common mistakes that are done, especially in Aikido, so you can avoid them. The first is, as I go to fall, if I'm falling and I get to about here and then I throw my hips up to go over, you're going to land a lot harder if you're falling from this far off the ground. So tip number one is, as he takes my hand in that position, I'm gonna go over and look how close I'm gonna get my hips to the ground before I fall, and that's really key to taking a solid, relaxed fall is the closer you get to the ground before you rotate and hit the ground. So that's the first key, is getting your hips as close to the ground as you can before you rotate over. So you're rotating here instead of trying to throw your hips over and rotate from a higher position. Okay, the next mistake is as he goes to throw me, especially with Kodagash, is I'm gonna wanna roll with the Kodagash, so I'm gonna roll my shoulder this way and then end up flopping on your hip because I'm not going straight over. So the key is my body going, whether I'm in this position, uh, like a Sankyo, Boom, I'm going over the top this way. You never want to go over the top and then let the hips fall out to the side. Otherwise, you're gonna take a really hard fall because you're gonna go straight over and then you're gonna let your hips roll out. Instead of going over the top of me, they're gonna roll out and then you're gonna end up landing on your side instead of going straight over. So again, to show that, if my arm is in this position, it's just like if I'm rolling, so I've got to get that same extension with my shoulder. Extension, it's a lot harder to do in this position, but I'm extending my arm like this, and then I'm going to go straight over. So when this goes down, 
I wait, and then my hips have to go straight over the position, and then I'm going to pull, or I'm going to actually extend, and he's going to pull up and hold my body. So the tip I'm throwing is, again, I'm going to throw him, keep him extended while I'm throwing him, and at the last second, I'm going to just give a jolt. Now, you don't want to pull up too soon or too hard because you'll rotate, and then they'll land on their side instead of uh, more surface area, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I want to extend his body. I'm going to extend, and then as he falls, I'm going to just put a little a little catch, and I'm going to try to pull his center. If he's, got, if he's solid, I'm going to be able to pull his center and let him hit the mat with a lot less force. So here, as he goes. So I'm pulling up as he's hitting, right when he hits. Now the mistake you make is if I pull up too much, I'm going to roll him over and he's going to just land on his kidney. So you want to you still not affect his falling, but you want to pull the pressure out of his body as much as you can.